Okay, today I want to take a look at my uh, Sony DECR1000A uh, reference tool. We'll get straight into this and have a look at the system itself. So uh, we've got two hard drive bays, hot swappable bays. We've got a Blu-ray drive, power switch, Blu-ray eject switch. You've got a system initialize button, network initialize button, reset button wireless LAN indicator, some GPIO indicators, uh, an SD memory card, a memory stick and a compact flash. We've got six USB A type connectors and a foot switch. So one hard drive is the hard drive that would normally be inside a PlayStation 3 and the other hard drive is a, a dev bay which is used for Blu-ray emulation. They are uh, Seagate Barracuda drives, 400 gigabytes each, uh, running at 7,200 RPM. Lovely little bay that, it loves in, clicks in lovely. Um, when you first power on the unit, this uh, green LED starts to flash. You can't turn on the system at that point. You have to wait until that uh, LED turns solid, and then the system will boot from there. As the system boots, various lights will come on and off. As the system starts to initialise, hard drive will be accessed and you uh, eventually get a screen come up. You can uh, usually either boot into this screen or the uh, PS3 directly itself, depending on uh, how you configure the GPO switches. This is what the system's all about. This is the uh, PlayStation 3 as the retail console. This is the machine, obviously, this um, unit emulates and uh, allows the de developers to have a, a better understanding of what's going on. So here we have it booting into its um, normal PS3 state. Um, it's just telling me here that uh, the system wasn't shut down properly. So it's going to do very much like a normal PlayStation 3. It's going to carry out um, a hard drive um, check. But obviously you've got to connect a uh, joypad up to allow that to happen. Um, I've not got the Bluetooth antenna plugged in. This is a separate item on this unit. Um, so you can just plug in a... Uh, a USB stick into a standard controller. I'm actually using a PlayStation 4 controller on this um, but obviously it didn't come with that when it was originally designed. So here it's just uh, checking the hard drive um, just to make sure that everything's okay and nothing's been corrupted because it wasn't shut down properly. So that's using one of the hard drives, I think it's Bay 4 the hard drive that it's using which would have been in the normal PlayStation 3. So again we've just got a normal PlayStation 3 boot or what appears to be. Um, nothing seems to be unusual at first glance. That's actually a game loaded onto the hard drive, so we can uh, we'll just go through that a bit later on. What you'll see from most um, dev units or uh, hacked, you know, even the hacked PlayStation 4 stuff like you'll see these extra menus which appear, uh, these debug menus. On the PlayStation 3, um, it tends, just like the PlayStation 4 really, it tends to be at the bottom of the menu and uh, you can click on this and this enables you to set the region um, all the environments and everything about the machine the resolution how it how it performs how it talks to everything can all be configured from this menu which is really cool when you're trying to design a game that is worldwide um, and if you're you know you're going to be using it worldwide you need certain things to be configured appropriately this was released before the PlayStation 3, obviously because it was used as a game, cast, game testing device. And there was a, an, an earlier version of this. I appear to have the later version of this. The earlier version of this had two HDMI ports at the back, um, where mine has only got the, the one HDMI port, and I do believe that that means it's one of the later units. So that's running version 4.41, and as you can see, it's only using one of those 400 gig hard drives. Like I say, this game is being emulated actually on the hard drive. But having a look at the back, we've got a service connector and a LAN port, a dev LAN port. We've got four audio outputs. That's an antenna for wireless LAN or Bluetooth functions. Another LAN port, extension connections uh, currently not used, a monitor connection, a HDMI, a digital out, and a normal multi-out. There's your power cord goes in and your power switch. 
On the back of the unit also there's these inlet and outlets because it was obviously could be meant uh, rack mounted and there's a lot of vents at the back that allow uh, the system to keep cool. That's where the um, either the, the stand that come with it or the rack mounts. That's a picture of the actual stand that you could purchase so it could be obviously vertically mounted. Most of the time this was how it was mounted because my system did come with a lot of dents on it. So that's a, a brief explanation of what goes on on the front of the unit and on the back. That's just a picture of how the stand bolted on. I do intend to probably make one of these. I would like mine to stand up just for uh, ease of access. In the manual, this just shows you what the uh, system does. That's the uh, Bluetooth antenna. With the top cover off, this is what you're presented with, all these heat shields. With that rear heat shield off, it gains access to uh, the main board. And here's the uh, two main processors on the board. As you can see, it's all Sony branded. All custom stuff really. It's nice calling fans at the back. That's the communication process. The communication processor could be accessed separately by the dev. So if the system crashed and stuff like that, the devs could see why basically. Um, and just obviously be able to debug it from there. There's the two massive heat sinks, keeping those processors nice and cool. All the ducting that allows the air to be drawn in. These are the two hard drive connections. Interesting that they're uh, SATA connection at the front, but almost like an ID connection at the back. That's the power supply. If anybody that's interested. Interestingly enough, when I got this unit, it wouldn't power up. Um, I've had to um, repaste the two processors because the system was overheating. It's quite a common problem on these, the same as the um, PS3, where they have issues with the um, yellow light of death. Um, where the uh, processor becomes, you know, the, the, the deballing of the uh, processor happens greatly that this one obviously is shut down early and has not caused any damage to those so all I had to do was replace the processors and uh, everything was okay. So this just shows some um, your debug menus that when these game testers were playing the games of different, you know, what, what the idea of this was that um, a host PC uh, sent code you know whether that was assets or parts of the game was sent to this and uh, you know, could have been by a target manager or obviously the, a special program that was just used on a normal PC that those assets were then sent to this unit which um, could be individually tested by games testers using actual PlayStation 3 hardware it's nice to dip your toe into this ecosystem of actually how they build games you know it, it looks like you know a lot of these things are, are boiled down into bite-sized chunks so that uh, testers and developers don't do too much uh, all in one go but um, you know, it's really good to see this system in its uh, up and working and saved so if you've got this far thanks for watching and I'll catch you again in the next video bye for now